Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, July 26, 2023. I am Fredicia Liburd. Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, will host his next monthly press conference on Monday, July 31st. The press conference will be held at the Cabinet Room on the second floor of the Social Security Building at Penny's Estate. Premier Brantley will provide an update on matters pertaining to Nevis and members of the press will have the opportunity to ask questions. The press conference will be broadcast live from 10 a.m. on Nevis Television, NTV Channel 99, NevisTVOnline.com, NTV Go App, Nevis Television Facebook page and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. Culture Honor 49 officially opens on Thursday, July 27th at the Cultural Complex in Charlestown. And this year we have moved the official opening ceremony from the Cultural Village to the Cultural Complex. We will be having a production styled opening ceremony and so we have decided to take that production styled opening ceremony to a much larger space, a much larger performance area, the stage area, which we have at the cultural complex. Now, before we have the opening ceremony, we are gonna have a mini street parade from the Nevis Tourism Authority building up to the cultural complex. But even before the mini parade, we will have a DJ DJ Smudge, he will be performing live at the Nevis Tourism Authority apron from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. And so while after work, persons can come down to the Nevis Tourism Authority building and be entertained by DJ Smudge. The parade would see cultural performances from the Nevis Cultural Development Foundation. We'll have masquerades, we'll have clowns, we will have the NCDF steel pan and DJ Smudge. They will also form a part of the parade from the Nevis Tourism Authority building up to the cultural complex. We will also be joined by some cultural performances from St. Kitts. And so we'll have Valon Masquerade, we'll have the act actors, we'll have the mummies, um, and they will also be a part of the parade from the Nevis Tourism Authority building up to the cultural complex. So we are looking at a parade of say, in excess of 100 persons, because also joining the parade, we'll have all of our contestants, both junior contestants, that is the Mr. and Miss Talented Youth pageant contestants, they will be joining the parade. The Miss Culture Swimwear and the Miss Culture Queen pageant contestants, they too will also be a part of the parade, even the Nevis Culture Armor Committee members. Chair of the Culture Armor 49 Committee, Antonio Abonati Liburd, then spoke about what persons can expect to see at the official opening in the cultural complex and also encouraged persons to support the event, which is free of charge. We will have performances by Vinal Powell our winners from last year, so we'll see Mr. Hype, um, T-Bone, our junior Calypso Monarch, Princess Nevea, we'll have King Astro, and all of these, Blade, our, 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 our groovy Soka Monarch winner, all of these performances will be happening at the, at the cultural complex, along with um, cakewalk dancers, along with Maka Jumbi, along with clowns, and so it's gonna be an evening filled with entertainment, filled with cultural performances. And so I want to invite the whole of Nevis, the whole of St. Kitts, to join us on Thursday, July the 27th, from 6 p.m. for the parade from the NTA building to the cultural complex, and then the official opening ceremony at the cultural complex from 7 p.m. Culture Armor 49 is being held with the slogan, 49 years of mass and spree, Culturama 2023. The Culturama Committee is advising patrons of the festival's main events that they will be subject to a no re-entry policy. Chair of the Culturama Committee, Antonio Liburd, explains. It's been quite some time that we implemented the no re-entry policy. We have moved to to, to 
international, regional international standards um, where once you enter the facility, um, you are not allowed to go back out. If you want to go back out, um, you would have to pay another another re-entry. You would have to pay a fee, buy another ticket, or purchase another ticket to, to, to re-enter the facility. So when you purchase a ticket, it clearly states no re-entry. So once you go outside, you must be prepared to spend another 40 or 50 dollars. Our shows this year are 40 dollars in advance, most of our shows, and at the gates you'll pay you'll pay 50 dollars, so you'll have to pay another 50 dollars uh, if you want to re-enter. As noted by Liberg, the no re-entry policy is also an effort to prevent any difficulties for the security forces. It creates a, some difficulty for the security forces. There are persons coming in and you want to go out. Understood. It creates a Understood. bottleneck at the gate. Understood. And mm -hmm. for the persons that are scanning, and they, 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 there are some persons, they come in, they are scanned, they go back out. And when they re-enter, they don't want to be scanned. Chair of the Culturama Committee, Antonio Abonati Liberd, appearing as a guest on Government at Work, a weekly program hosted by Keith Scarborough, Public Relations Officer for the NIA. Still to come, Ministry of Social Development facilitates shock responsive social protection workshop. The details right after this break. Welcome back. The Federal Ministry of Social Development and Gender Affairs is this week facilitating a shock responsive social protection workshop sponsored by the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the World Food Programme. A press release from the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service says the workshop is timely because of the growing number of contributing factors globally, including climate disasters and the number of children and families living in communities vulnerable to shocks and facing emergency situations. The Shock Responsive Social Protection Workshop is intended to help officials in St. Kitts and Nevis strengthen the country's social protection systems to be able to respond to growing needs. The workshop, which runs from Tuesday 25th to Friday 28th July, is being attended by community development and social services officers, as well as disaster response officials. The Monetary Council of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, has approved the proposal to replace the late Queen Elizabeth II's image on the Eastern Caribbean currency. The image of Queen Elizabeth II, who died on September 8, 2022, has been on the currency of British overseas territories and former colonies for decades. The ECCU is proposing to replace her image with the ECCU's logo and has begun a public consultation process carded to last until December 31, 2023. During the consultation period, the public will be invited to comment on the proposal and to offer suggestions. The final decision on the new image for the EC currency will be made by February 2024. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Liburn. Thank you for viewing.